Hey guys, and welcome to another Meet the Builders video about Cinema 4D. I've done a basic video uh, explaining the basics of rendering Minecraft things in Cinema 4D, and a lot of people have been asking me to do a more advanced tutorial thing, so after all that demand, I thought I'd just give in and do a more advanced one. And I'm gonna do one about a 360 degree render that you see a lot on project presentations on Planet Minecraft. You see them literally everywhere. So yeah, I'm just gonna explain to you guys how to make them so everyone can make start making them. Okay, uh, also you might notice some changes behind me. I did update the setup and honestly, if you guys want videos on setups and stuff, just ask, I'm fully prepared to make some. I even did some small video parts while setting up this particular one. So I'm a tech guy, I know some of you guys are tech guys, so if you want me to do videos on tech stuff on this channel or maybe a different channel, just hit me up and I'll try to do my best. Anyway guys, the build I'll be using is the Into the Frying Pan build by Solari that I keynoted on this channel of course. Um, if you haven't seen that keynote, you can always check it out right after this video. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoy. Okay, we're now in Cinema 4D and I already have the project open and the textures applied. If you want to learn how to do that, just check back with the first video. But for now, we're just gonna make a GIF or a GIF or a rotating render, whatever you want. Okay, so we start by making a camera. On the, you then select that camera and do your rotations to zero this also to zero that means finding your project and putting it nicely in the middle okay what you're gonna do next is deselect that and add your lights of course, lighting is important, as we all know. And I do tend to use a lot of lights, but that's just what I do. I'm going for a soft gradient on the back of the build, so I'm using a little bit of color there, and just gonna boost all the visibility and dust. Okay. Um, then we're gonna need another light on the front Just gonna use it a little bit to the right And one a little bit to the left Okay That's how that looks um, We're now going to add a sky object and then we're gonna make a new material, attach that to the sky, and give that a nice color, a bit of blue maybe. This doesn't have to be blue, this can be whatever you want. You can even make it a gradient, I'll maybe do that. Um, in a circular gradient, and let's change the colors a bit, why not red? to maybe blue, dark purple maybe, that's a bit weird, but um, let's just try light blue, okay that's something I like, yeah, we can now rotate that sky to get a redder or bluer, whatever you want. Just gonna go with this and go to into our render settings. Uh, I'm gonna scale it down a bit because I don't want to wait for the rest of my life. And we're gonna set to manual frames from frame 10 
299 you're gonna see why very soon and turn on ambient occlusion I suggest not turning on global illumination for this one because that would mean you wait for ages people like doing that sometimes but I generally don't so you do you um, all right with what you do next is you test of course your render how that looks and it looks like I've forgotten something the original light I put I want that to be a lot bigger. So I'm gonna exit the camera. I even forgot to put on visible light. Okay. There's that. And I spoke how to do volumetric lights in the previous video, so I'm not gonna repeat that again. So yeah. Um just gonna render that out real quick again that might be a bit much yeah thinking that might be a bit much um lower the brightness a bit and shrink the radius okay just gonna have a lost render all right yeah that's sort of what i was going for uh, what you do next is that you select all the blocks in your object like this then you go to your zero point change your rotation to minus 40 go here and set it to zero go to just add 110 on your 90 you go no right your 100 you go 360 that's something you're gonna have to do manually um, that's that and again click that and then at 110 you make that 400 of course it changes back to 40 and why did I do that so in the last 10 frames and in the first 10 frames the object is speeding up or slowing down and you can do that with slowing up and uh, speeding up and slowing down but I'm gonna try and make a really continuous uh, rotation so we're not gonna have those slowing ups uh, <laughs> speeding ups and speeding down so this is how that looks of course it's gonna go faster because we're now in a very slow speed and my cinema 4d has having troubles keeping up with me i'm running some big things in the background so
Okay, that's done. Took 23 minutes, so it wasn't exactly that bad. Okay, now to save them all, we just... Now, just click on the first, shift click on the last one, then go here, save as, JPEG, selected frames, okay. We're gonna make a new map. Just gonna call it new map and district and save them. Okay, what we're gonna do now is go into Photoshop, new file. run the script load files into stack now we go look for those images we select them all Control a now Photoshop is loading in all the images again this will take a bit of time and there they are okay Now again, the Photoshop is now turning all the images into layers. So every image is one layer. Again, this will take more time. That's the thing with rotating GIFs. It's a very time consuming business. But yeah, the results are often worth it. Okay, they're all in. So what we do now is we select all the layers in your timeline and create make frames from layers. That basically turns each layer into a frame for the rotating, rotating image. So what you do then is you select all your 90 frames then you have to decide okay how long do i want my my gif to rotate and that's easily calculate you have 90 frames and let's say you want a five second frame uh, five second image you just do five divided by 90 and you have zero point zero five seconds per frame okay that's that and you can just do file save for web can play it here and then of course saving and there we go that's our rotating image saved. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more videos on Cinema 4D just hit me up and I'll do my best to serve. Anyway guys I'll talk to you in the next one. See ya.